Oh gosh, no. No, you're not gonna make me do that. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so when she passed, I was like, I gotta do it. Hi, I'm Lauren, and this is Growing Up in Miami. Say hi! Lauren! Hi. So I grew up in Miami, Florida, Tate County area. Okay, so growing up in my house was um, loud. <laughs> I'm one of three, so I'm the oldest of three kids, and my brother and my sister grew up with me as well. So this is my mom and my dad. This is Mike and Clara. Clara. <laughs> and this is me. It's my little bug teeth that had just come in. My dad plays the drums, and so we had a drum set and a piano in the house, and like, there was always a lot of ruckus, you know? Whenever we would have any parties or anything at the house, it was just loud music always playing, and everybody was always dancing and like festive, you know? So I feel like that was always really a huge reason why I gravitated towards that. I'm Cuban, like ethnic, Cuban, I'm white. So I also have Spanish um, descent as well. My grandparents came over to America in the 60s, having to build a brand new life in a new country and have you know a completely new language that you have to learn and kind of hustle and integrate into that system, I guess really did influence me. It's my grandma, Abuelita, Abuela Angelica. She really wanted me to be a normal person. <laughs> she, every time I would come home, she'd be like, mija, pero cuando tu vas a regresar? Like, but mija, like, when are you coming back? Creativity was always a huge part of my life. I was always humming or like making up some dance. That was my regular thing. When I was younger, I used to dance a lot. I would do these choreographies and then I would do a performance for my family. Woo! Yes, you know, that's what I used to do. <laughs> My grandma, Grace, like she was my number one fan and she would sit and watch every single performance that I did and every single moment that I had. She'd be front row and she'd be like, let's go, show me what you got, girl. I'd do the dance or whatever and she'd be like, good show. She was the reason why I auditioned for X Factor. We used to always watch American Idol together and she would always tell me like, you're gonna sing for Simon Cowell and he's gonna know, he's gonna see what I see. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and so when she passed, I was like, I gotta do it. And so I did it. <laughs> and I remember being at the audition, it was like 10,000 people in my like limited two outfit. <laughs> no, it was limited two. It was the upper echelon of limited two. It was an express blue see-through top with a band, I'll never forget it. And I did my own makeup and it was gone by the time I was in front of anybody because I didn't know how to do my own makeup. And I remember after that audition, I walked out with my dad. These two girls came up to me and they were like freaking out. And I was like, what? you know what I mean? <laughs> and they were like, oh my God, we heard you sing and it was just so good. And like, we're gonna be following your whole journey. Like da da da. And I was literally like, what? Like these are complete and total strangers. Like I never experienced that before. They asked me for my autograph and I was like, what? I've been practicing this my whole life. Here you go. I mean, I 100% went into the auditions with the intention of being a solo artist, of course, as all five of us did. That year specifically, they really wanted a girl group because One Direction had just had a lot of success and I knew that Simon Cowell was looking for the female One Direction. That was like the whole MO of that season, essentially. So God did what God does and orchestrated me being in that girl group. At first, I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm just gonna be straight up. Like, I really, and not in like an arrogant way. It really wasn't about arrogance. It was just about intentionality of like what I had envisioned for myself. My parents even sat me down. They were like, you don't have to do this. You know, you can walk away, we can go home. We'll love and support you either way. This is an opportunity. And so if you wanna make that choice and you're willing to, to work really hard and, and sacrifice like for your dream, this is your vehicle, this is the door. Being in that group taught me a lot. And at the time, I didn't understand what it was teaching me because I had to go through it. I had like a huge ego death in that group. A lot of lessons on hard work, a lot of lessons about burnout, how to navigate from a place of heart and stay true to myself through noise and through challenges, like deep moral challenges that came across all of us at, at one point or another on that journey. And I don't think I had the strength at 16 to have done it on my own and so, um, available for scrutiny at all times, you know, and how that does to you when you're a kid or a teenager going through your formative years of understanding who you are. And doing that surrounded by four other girls was definitely, it was challenging to, to understand who you are 
in that kind of setting where everyone's telling you, you must be this in order to sell this, or you must be this in order for this to work. It was quite the journey, but also, again, it got me to understanding myself in a way that I never would have been able to. Getting to do the things that we did was was such a blessing, and meet people all over the world who support your craft. Like for us, the amount of little, like young people's lives that we touched through that process, and the way that we presented out into the world a representation that we represented of like different kinds of people and different kinds of women and different kinds of body types like all of that kind of I love that aspect of what we did you know work from home was definitely one of the more chaotic times that we were going through as a group but at the same time it was also such a whirlwind because everything that we had worked so hard for was coming to fruition it had been four or five years at that point of us, you know how much hard work we put in. We did mall tours, baby. Like It was for that pivotal moment, you know, in our careers. And I'm, I, I'm so grateful to this day for that because that, that put us on the map. So all the girls and I from Fifth Harmony just kind of realizing that we were at a point where we had grown beyond and past what this was for us. It was of course bittersweet. We had built so much together which was a beautiful thing. And I'll never forget, I was in Thailand when I got, when we all got on the phone and we, we talked together and we were just like, this is it. Like, this is the last round. What we have left, we're gonna get done and we're gonna give each other the grace to, to move on and move forward with our lives. And so that conversation was the unlock moment for me where I felt myself free up. I felt the energy of a new beginning. And then that allowed me to write again, because I had not written any music while I was in Fifth Harmony at all, because I didn't think I could, because I've been told I couldn't. I really had disconnected from Lauren as an artist, like Lauren as a songwriter. I had just become Lauren the pop star that would show up and do her job. I got to move into a new reality and space of self-exploration that I started sonically and then had to dive into mentally. Because it's like, I'm here trying to make an album for myself, but how much of myself is really making that album and how much of that self is a compounded version of what people have told me I was. The journey of this music that I have coming out now and the journey of, this, of, of these songs was an unraveling process. Wish I had no expectations. expectations was definitely one of the biggest moments for me. It was the first single solo song that I put out. I wrote that song. I vocal produced that song. Being able to solidify or validate my ability as an artist, as a songwriter. I'm going to be debuting the first project, which is named Prelude. I'm excited to give it to the world and just like let my truth be in the sonics and not have to talk or explain or anything anymore. Just let the music speak for itself.